Hello, my name is Bill Costantino. I've been working, learning, and experimenting with Toyota Kata since April 2009. I'd like to share with you a simplified macro view of Toyota Kata, how it works to increase our knowledge and bring us to higher levels of performance. So here we go with the Toyota Kata Unified Field Theory. Like any good unified field theory, we begin with an individual surrounded by infinite space and unlimited possibilities. In a more practical way, each of us is surrounded by problems, waste, and opportunities for improvement. This might be in our work world, social life, private life, or personal enterprise. As we look around, each of us has a different perspective and base of experience. We each have a current knowledge threshold. Inside this threshold, we're fairly certain of what we know. We're confident and familiar with things based on our past experience. Outside the knowledge threshold, we may have little or no direct experience. We're less confident, less certain, or even completely unaware. Far enough beyond the threshold of knowledge, and we don't even know what we don't know. If we want to improve a situation, let's say at work, for example, we go take a look, observe what we can, and identify some number of problems that need to be fixed or opportunities waiting to be energized. This is the common intent behind the waste walk. Up to this point, we've only been investigating, seeing, and observing what might be possible within our own personal knowledge threshold. Thus far, we haven't actually taken any action or made any changes. At this point in our story, we're free to move in any possible direction. Just as our threshold of knowledge is an unseen limit or boundary to our perception, our personal biases are another unseen element that typically shape our thinking, choices, and our behavior patterns. The direction we are most likely to move is the direction with which we're most familiar, the direction we've practiced the most in the past. <clears throat> we may, in fact, even have more than one bias. The dominant bias, however, is the one that we will most likely tend to follow because A, it's most familiar, B, we're well practiced with it, and C, we thus have a high degree of confidence in what we're planning to do. At this point in the story, many leaders or managers would prepare the classic action item list with steps, dates, and owners for each of the key activities that we've identified. Because we have a high degree of familiarity and confidence, it often seems that we simply need to get into implementation mode and execute our plan to get the intended results. In contrast, Toyota Kata would have us use a different approach. Before taking any action, we would first try to understand the long-term vision of where we're headed, and specifically, the vision as it relates to our customer. Usually, such a vision is very far off in the future and quite vague. An element of Toyota's vision, for example, is one-by-one -one flow at lowest possible cost. Wonderful in theory, but it can be pretty difficult figuring out how to get our hands around it in actual practice. In order to provide a more tangible and concrete objective, we look for a specific challenge that's well aligned with the longer term vision. Typically, this challenge is in the one to three year time frame. As you can see in this example, while we may feel most confident and comfortable in the direction of our personal bias, it may not be well aligned to move us in the most direct path toward our longer term challenge and vision. So, in a more traditional environment, we have our pre existing bias for action contained within our current knowledge threshold. We have our ideas for improvement based on our waste walk. If we have a strong base of experience, we may have strong preconceived notions about what needs to happen and how things need to be done. Traditionally, we'd simply translate this into an action item list and get into implementation mode, getting to work to make things better. But wait, wait! At this point, Toyota Kata would ask us to shift our paradigm. Rather than getting busy implementing our action item list, our next step would be to step back and grasp the current condition. Within a relatively short period of time, we would first explore the situation in greater detail using a methodical, systematic series of steps. The purpose of grasping the current condition in this way is to see beyond our personal biases and preconceived notions and to gain a more detailed and comprehensive understanding. It allows us to conduct a more objective analysis that better prepares us to move in a direction more exactly aligned to the challenge and the vision. 
You'll notice when this is well done, our personal biases and preconceived notions have been, ideally, eliminated. Grasping the current condition is typically done following the steps of process analysis. Though these steps were initially framed for discrete manufacturing processes, they can also be effectively applied in the service industry, administrative work, health care, nonprofits, etc., anywhere, in fact, where value is delivered to a customer or a user within a certain time frame. Consistently using the steps of process analysis provides a very practical way for us to free our minds and thus escape the limitations and constraints of our own biases and preconceptions. With the process analysis completed, we're now ready to move on to the next step of setting the next target condition. You'll notice this next target condition is outside of our current knowledge threshold and directly aligned with the challenge and the vision. It is truly challenging because it's beyond our current knowledge. <clears throat> we don't know how we're going to get there. We are about to enter bump, 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 the gray zone. Remember, within our current knowledge threshold, we are in a zone of apparent certainty. We have high familiarity and a greater sense of comfort. As we reach and ultimately pass through our knowledge threshold, we enter the uncertainty zone. We're less comfortable. We're confronted with many more questions. Things are less certain, more ambiguous. This higher level of uncertainty and ambiguity in the gray zone often dissuades people from forging ahead. The likelihood of mistakes is higher in this zone. <clears throat> However, as you can see, this is also the most direct path for progressing toward our challenge. Toyota Kata provides a methodical way, a consistent routine, for navigating through this gray zone, even in the face of ambiguity and uncertainty. As we set out in pursuit of our next target condition, there will be many potential obstacles, some of which we will immediately recognize. A key principle of the Toyota Kata methodology is that we do not need to resolve every imaginable obstacle. Instead, we're looking for the most direct path toward our next target condition. We only need to solve those obstacles that are preventing us from operating in a way consistent with the next target condition. By using rapid PDCA cycles in a systematic way, we find our way through the field of obstacles in the most direct path toward the next target condition. Notice this is not a straight line. Of necessity, we will be in a mode of learning and discovery as we move through the gray zone. The key is to conduct these PDCA cycles as rapid experiments. From each experiment, we gain new information, we learn. And so, we're able to adjust our course based on facts and data gained through our experimenting. Thus, we move forward through our next, toward, toward our next target condition, and we're gaining knowledge we expand our threshold of knowledge. The key to moving forward quickly, i.e. learning quickly, is to conduct quick PDCA cycles, quick small experiments that give us useful facts and data about the obstacles we're facing. Ideally, we would be conducting small PDCA cycles every day. Consistently using this approach leads us along a path of discovery through the gray zone toward the attainment of the next target condition. Consistent and successful application of this rapid PDCA approach ultimately brings us to the desired target condition. The benefits of this Toyota Kata approach are considerable. We in fact achieve a new level of performance that was once beyond our capabilities. This new level of performance is well aligned with our ultimate direction toward achieving the larger challenge. We have effectively expanded our knowledge threshold, converting the former gray zone of uncertainty and ambiguity to now a comfort zone with greater familiarity, born of our own direct experience. And we've increased our personal skill with the improvement kata, this methodical series of steps that allows us to tackle a new challenging target condition that may be beyond our current knowledge threshold. As we gain experience and confidence with this Toyota Kata approach, we're able to tackle successive new target conditions that move us steadily toward the ultimate attainment of our longer-term challenge. Establishing the longer-term vision and challenge is the role of leadership in organizations. Only the senior leaders can set the strategic direction for the company. Teaching how to use the improvement kata to methodically move through the gray zone toward the next target condition 
That's the job of managers at all levels in the organization. <clears throat> Consistent application of the Toyota Kata approach results in two powerful benefits. It allows us to achieve challenging target conditions that are critical to our long-term success to achieve new and higher levels of performance. It also develops the skill and capabilities of the people in our organization to face more of these challenges in the future and to do so with increasing confidence. So there you have it, the unified Toyota Kata Field Theory version 1.0.